once the last tour happened and we, you know, then a couple months later, we announced that the band was breaking up. We had talked about doing some final shows just because our last tour, no one knew it was our last tour except for us. There was talk of the idea of doing some final shows for, not only for us, but for the fans as well because maybe some people felt like they were ripped off. I'm not sure what specific event led to it. I think it was a few things. We'd all started talking again a little bit. Not that we were, not that we were avoiding each other, just, you know, everyone's getting on with their lives. The manager Joel had, you know, kind of put the bug in everyone's ear about um, the possibility of doing another shows. We'd talked about it and we said it in our final statement. We're like, maybe we do a proper farewell thing. And I, I thought that it was gonna be, we'll do a Toronto show or something you know, and do a proper farewell. And then for a while I don't, you know, it kind of just was stagnant and, and I didn't, I didn't know if it was gonna happen. I was totally down to do it. I wanted to do it. I think I needed to do it. I was in Thailand and this kid came up to me wearing an Alex on Fire shirt and flipping out that I was there and telling me how much he loves the band and just everything and how much it means to him. Um, I emailed all the guys, told them this kind of crazy story. And, uh, cause I was like walking down an alleyway, like Bangkok. Not doing anything weird, just, um, half weird. Getting into some half weird stuff. And so yeah, it was this really cool experience, you know? I was really far away from home. Alexis toured a lot, but, you know, never made it there. We all had time to deal with the fact that the band had broken up. We all kind of got over any personal issues that we may or may not have had. Uh, Dal responded saying he'd just been in Melbourne in Australia, City and Color was playing down there. He had this really long heart to heart with this guy in Melbourne about how much the band means to him and how we were the band that got him into heavy music and just a really cool, inspiring conversation. The idea of a farewell tour looked very exciting to all of us, you know, a chance for for it to go out on the right, to end the right way. I think we all kind of started sharing these moments on this, you know, while we were all over the place. You know, I was on tour with Gallows, Dal was on tour with City and Color. Some of the dudes were at home, at school, doing their own thing. And so maybe that's at the point we said, might as well do one show. And that kind of turned into, let's do England, Toronto, Sydney. And then we were like, okay, that's interesting, but I don't think we can do that and, and I can still have a house because I think we'll lose all our money doing that and it'll be, it'll be an expensive thing to do. And then there was talk about, okay, well maybe we can fill in the gaps and we can turn it into three weeks and we can go to our favorite places and, 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 and try our best to give it a proper send off. We got to end it on a nice note for our fans. We got to do something bands never get to do is actually come back and be like, Thank you. The end of the band before then had been really kind of a dark, kind of unhappy thing. The tour happened a year after that, and we were excited. I think we were, we'd all kind of moved past that. We were all in different places in our lives. We owed it to ourselves to do it. Something that been such a huge part of our lives to end it on a really positive note. I'm glad we did. We owed it to our fans for giving us this life in music, giving us all these incredible opportunities to tour the world with my best friends. So we could come back, we could remember it and with everybody in the crowd and, and do it properly, not behind closed doors. Then it all came together and it was mental and best time of my life. I'm glad we could do it. It was an incredible send off, you know? Had its emotional moments, had its hilarious moments and it was, it was amazing. You can't ask for a better way to, to have closure on your band than that. Started rehearsing for it, uh, and I was pretty, pretty worried, because I was, I was rehearsing by myself just with headphones on or whatever, and uh, it's kind of hard to do that, because you, you can't really hear what you're playing, because your headphones are jammed in your ear, so you're kind of playing along, and you think that's what it is. One practice was me and Beard and Steel in my house. Then we had one practice with me, George, Beard and Steel, because Wade was on tour with Gallows, and then we had one practice as a band 
in my house for a couple hours. And then we went on tour for the first time in two years. I barely played guitar that year, you know, and uh, showed up like honestly a little bit nervous, like, do I still know how to do this? Went to Dal's house, everyone started cutting each other up. Um, it was like the same old shit. And the, the first jam, as soon as we played, like for I think two, three songs in, I, was, I wasn't worried at all anymore. Everything came back like nothing, like it was like we just, you know, rehearsed the week before. It was just funny. It was like same old shit. Yeah, we just started cracking wise immediately, and you know we're joking, and it's same. We you know picked up all the same rules that we had before. We never had like there was never a bad time really. Sometimes we're better than others with Alexis, but but uh, we were all still very much friends, and that came across in this. There was no pressure really. We all just kind of sat down and you know you joked, you tell you tell stories about what you've been doing in the last year and. And here, oh, I saw this person. What an asshole! You know, <laughs> like, like that sort of, that sort of stuff. Luckily, we did remember the songs because there's only like two day gap in between, you know, my tour ending and this tour happening. It's luckily, a simple experience figuring out all the songs again and getting them back into into uh, into shape. I mean, we didn't have enough time to dwell on anything. We just were like, do we know how to play the songs? Kinda. Okay, let's go. But from the moment we walked out on stage on the first night at Brixton, it was like, well, that's fine, we're fine. You know, muscle memory and sort of, it all just comes back to you. Except for the old songs, which we don't know how to play anymore. Craziest show was Brazil, um, was Sao Paulo. We never played there. We always knew the band had a lot of fans there. And it was kind of our Beatles moment when we went. And it was, you know, we had to be like ushered into the, the club with like intense security because everyone was flipping out. It was a, one of those bucket list places. We've always been harassed by kids from Brazil on, on social media being like, why aren't you coming to Brazil? Come to Brazil, what's going on? And we wanted to do it. I always wanted to do it. I had a lot of respect for bands that would go down there. I'd heard a lot of really interesting stories from people, some of which were kind of scary about going to South America and playing shows in like Colombia or wherever and all this stuff. And I've always really respected bands who did it because uh, from what I gather, it's, it's, you know, especially putting on shows, there's questions about, you know, who's promoting them and who, you know, whether or not there's, you're going to get paid for the show if you should go down or, or whatever. And, and, and this was, and I always wanted to throw caution in the wind and go, but it was always an afterthought. After we'd been on the road for like eight months, you're not going to, the last thing you want to do is go and have a cultural experience in South America. You kind of want to just go and I want to go back in the stairs or something. You know, it's not easy to go everywhere. You know, if you're a ginormous band and you can make you know that, you know, you can go play for thousands of people everywhere, it makes it a little bit easier. But when you're a band that's like kind of where we were, it's still like when you're touring, you're just hemorrhaging money, right? A lot of people don't realize that. Like, you're just spending money constantly, all day, every day. And it costs a lot of money to go and tour. So the thing with Brazil is just never, never worked out in their schedule or, you know, never made sense for us to go there without it not being successful in more ways than one. But so then when we were putting the shows together, we thought, well, we, got, we should do something weird not that going to England and Australia and all of Canada in two weeks wasn't weird enough. We thought we would just throw Brazil in there because, you know, kind of like a first and last time going. We knew we had a lot of a lot of fans down there, so when this tour came around um, and we got the offer from Brazil, we were like, yeah, we definitely got to do it because we've been trying to get down there for years and have never actually been able to get there. So. Uh, so when we actually did get there, it was and get to play there. It was definitely a uh, one of those moments where I think all of us were kind of like, "Why the fuck didn't we come here? We should have just made the extra week and just done it um, before." But um, yeah, it was a great, great experience. Brazil's an amazing country, and I'd, I'd uh, go back in a second. That's the craziest show I've ever been a part of. Doors opened at nine o'clock. Was we were the only band playing. We went on at one o'clock in the morning. I don't know why, I guess that's something they do there. You put like, you know, 2,000 people in a room and make them sweat for five hours. 
and then put the really loud, aggressive band on that they've been waiting their whole lives to see. Yeah, and it was just like a sort of out-of-body experience, you know, as, as, as dramatic as that sounds. It really was. It was, it, not only was it so unbelievably hot, so that makes you feel really weird when you're playing and trying to like, you know, move as aggressively as we did. Then you have to sing, and then there's these people that are just literally killing each other because of the songs that you've written. You know, we started playing that show, and we're a loud band, and I could not hear anything. Like, people were singing so loud, they were drowning out my guitar, drowning out the drums completely. Um, it was incredible. There was no bouncers, really. There was like one guy, and these kids just kept falling over the barricade, they're bleeding, and everyone was shirtless. It was nuts. It's the only place where we've ever had to be like rushed out of the building, like into the van and driven away, people hitting it and stuff. That doesn't happen to us, you know? We're not Bieber. Yeah. We, I mean, we always had great fans and some pretty crazy fans that are willing to tattoo our logo on their body or something, but usually they just want to give you a hug and talk to you about a song. They don't, you know? So that was the, it was the closest that we will ever, and I will ever come to like some sort of Beatlemania type thing. The whole thing was a really positive experience. It was really fun. It was really, it was great. Um, but I think every once in a while, it would kind of creep in what's going on, you know? You felt happy that the shows were happening in that, in that way. Um, and they were well received and, and it was cool, you know? But I, again, I think we were all ready to kind of move past it and move on. So that it wasn't like this tearful, oh, why are we stopping? It was like, oh, we're stopping. That's okay, good. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, you, you, it feels nice that people cared enough to come out and see it one last time kind of thing. It was difficult. Um, it was definitely, uh, you know, hard to take in at times, but at the same time, we, we didn't want to, uh, I've never been, I don't think any of us are really ones to focus on the bad. You know, we have always kind of been, um, uh, somewhat optimistic, well most of them. It would kind of creep up on you sometimes and you'd realize that's the last time I'm gonna be here. It's the last Montreal show. It's the last Vancouver show. I think we all kind of avoided that, that uh, you know, I love you man moment till the last possible you know, thing. Like we kept our, I don't know, we're kind of a crew of people that you don't get away with much, like especially sentimentality. I don't think we're a pr very sentimental bunch of guys. But this one, um, it was hard to avoid. You know, you had to kind of, at some point we knew we were going to have to have the whole, you know, like, you know, we were going to have to say something meaningful to one another. <laughs> you know, like we were going to have to say something like, uh, you know, heartfelt. And that's never an easy, I don't, think that, I don't think that's easy for any of us to do. We'd be having a great time laughing, enjoying ourselves. And then George would say something heartfelt and sincere and I'd just be like, And, uh, yeah, so there was some really sad moments, too, you know. This, the last one was tough. I remember, remember in Hamilton, we kind of did our group hug thing like we always do. And uh, I remember everyone kind of getting a little choked up and then going out and we're like, holy shit. This, <laughs> once, once we got out there and saw how big the crowd was, we like, okay, well, this is it's not all bad. <laughs> but it was definitely uh, the beginning of that show before we went out and the very end of it was, was, pretty, was pretty rough. But, uh, but like I say, it was, it was still, still really, really fun. Before the show, they were just the same as I was always. I mean, we, we were always pretty good at just like, uh, you know, we give each other shit constantly. We still do. Uh, and that show was no different. You're, you're trying to make light of the situation because that's how, we, that's how we deal with everything is we make jokes and we have a good time. But in the back of our throat, we can feel that, you know, like it's going to be... It was going to be a heavy one. It was going to be a heavy show. And it was. It was great. We played, I thought we played really well and, and uh, we did a proper send off. And there were moments where I was genuinely, I don't know, you know, like moved by it. You know, like it was a giant show. And when you say goodbye for that last time, you know, you feel it. it yeah, it has, it has, you know, as much as we like to kind of put up a bit of a bravado or whatever, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it moved me in some way, like to, almost to tears, you know? And that, that was, uh, yeah, it was cool. We wanted to do something 
as close to a hometown show as we kind of could. There's no really for us to play in St. Catharines. We all kind of grew up from St. Catharines to Burlington. So Hamilton seemed like a good idea. And uh, yeah, I mean, Toronto got like four. So give Hamilton one. We wanted to do some sort of bigger show to see if we could end it on a bigger note. And Cops was kind of cool because it's a working man's town. I felt like we were a working man's band. For me, it was to, to, to play the Cops Coliseum as the last show. It just kind of seemed fitting because it was like the first time everyone went and saw a rock show was there. Um, and uh, I mean, I think me and Wade were born in Hamilton. George lives in Hamilton. Um, it just kind of, I don't know, kind of makes sense in a way. No one ever got too big for the band, and I mean that, I don't, you know, a lot of people would think that I'm the guy who got too big for the band, but that's not the case. It's not the way it was. That's not the way it went down. We always kept each other pretty level-headed, I think, which is why we were able to be a band for so long and tour so much. Before the show, I think it was a bit uh, ominous, that one. It uh, it felt strange. I mean, it was, it just felt, that day was odd, you know? Um, been building up to it, biggest show of the tour. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a sad day. It was cool, it was an incredible show, but it kind of just like, it was a bit of a blur. I'm glad we recorded it. Afterwards, we had a little moment, but other, you know, then we went right back to giving each other shit, and that's sort of the relationship we've always had with one another, you know? It was overwhelmingly positive, which is nice. 